higher seed and uh, playing at arena that is their home. Thompson Bowling Arena. This is their 55th NCAA tournament game. All time for Tennessee on their home floor. They are a perfect 54 and 0 and we're underway. And right away, Boise State starts in a 2-3 matchup zone. Graves stepping down inside, busts right through a seam in the defense and the kick to Andrea Carter in an early personal foul called against Boise State. That will go against Camille Redman, the 6'4 senior out of Grand Prairie, Texas, and a transfer from Purdue. And really an important player in the post, picks up her first personal foul about 10 seconds in. And you can see they go man-to-man -man out of bounds. Coach Gordy Presnell said that they were going to change up their defenses, try to make Tennessee think, try to keep them off balance. He knows if Tennessee is comfortable, they're way too much to handle. And for Boise State, a prolific three-point shooting team. They take a lot, they make a lot. And against this full-court pressure, they obviously have to take care of the basketball. Jai Rodriguez, as she's known by her teammates out of the backcourt, A lot of movement, a lot of motion on their offense. They love to move the ball. They love to go inside, as we see on the first play of the game. Beautiful motion offense, as you pointed out, Gail, and a knock inside by Mikel Askew. And they go back into their zone. A lot of times they'll go make miss, but if they find something's working for them, they'll stay in it. Zone looks pretty effective so far for Boise. Bashar Graves double team, shot clock winding down. Carter through the lane. Following jump shot rejected by Redmond. Powakoa running ahead, lays it up and in. Couldn't really be a better start for Boise State. And we'll see if Tennessee, they need to get some penetration against this zone. Graves. Stepping inside, pump fake boy, and makes that a very dangerous. Camille Redmond almost picked up her second personal foul. Inside to Redmond, off the glass, no, well defended by Graves, and the immediate kick out to Jordan Reynolds. Kick ahead, the lob to Carter. Has that shot blocked from behind, knocked to the floor. And if that's the second personal foul on Redmond, that's real problems for Boise State. Head coach in her third season now here at the University of Tennessee, Holly Warlick. Three-time All-American, 27 years as an assistant coach for the one and only. And of course, Hall of Famer Pat Summit, who is sitting here courtside. And a couple of free throws coming to Carter. There is Pat Summit. 1,098 victories all time in 38 seasons here at Tennessee, eight national championships and 18 final fours. And the list goes on and on yeah, and indeed. on. And immediately, as I pointed out, Camille Redman has to go to the sideline and that is big for Boise State, their only real size. But she was careless. You know, she's a fifth year senior. She should not be coming out swatting at shots and, and that, that's, that's just irresponsible picking up your second personal foul that early. I mean, she's their most physical player, not just their, their most size inside, but she's a physical, athletic post player that they need on the floor. Powakoa, the three-pointer, and once again, Boise State looking not overwhelmed at all, playing Tennessee, particularly here at Thompson Bowling. Verdict left open, high, low, and a turnover there as Bashar Graves turned inside. And the architect of the good start, Gordy Presnell, now in his 10th season at Boise State. Second NCAA appearance under his tenure, the third all-time for Boise State. Their last was in 2007 when they were a member of the WAC. Here comes Burdick running three on one. Reynolds off the side of the iron. Burdick with the offensive rebound. And has to dribble it out of traffic. Great rebound by Burdick. And they like her against the zone in this high post area. Because she's such a good passer from there, she can hit that shot from the high post. Massingale, who's really been struggling from the perimeter. We'll detail that in a moment. Nice tip out, legally into the backcourt. No control by Tennessee. 
Ariel Massingale made eight threes in the final SEC regular season game right here on their home floor for Tennessee against Vanderbilt. They went four for 25 at the SEC tournament. Tennessee lost to South Carolina in the final. South Carolina, obviously a number one seed, currently ranked number three in the nation. That ball deflected out of bounds. And again, as you pointed out, Gail Geston course, an outstanding start to this game for Boise. And on the other hand, Tennessee, one of seven. We thought the nerves would be with the Boise State Broncos. Seems to be with Tennessee. They've already missed a couple of shots at point blank range. Boise now in a man to man. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. Jamie Nard has come on, the outstanding freshman out of the Northwest. Bashar Graves up fake, trying to split the defense. Lays it up and in. Very, very strong in the post is Bashar Graves. Two really good, aggressive moves from Graves, and that's a great sign for Tennessee. They need her to score and to be aggressive to be successful. Weaver off the backboard without hitting the iron, and a turnover violation is called against Nard in Tennessee, their second turnover. And Graves doing a nice job, little shot fake, scores with some contact, finishes strong. And Bashara Graves had led Tennessee to some of her best performances against top competition. Boise State out early here over Tennessee. <laughs> Just underway here in Knoxville and don't throw that dog a bone. They don't need any Boise State off to a very comfortable start right now. They made a couple of three pointers. They've moved the ball well and their zone defense Gail Guest of course looks to be causing Tennessee some difficulties. It really is and Tennessee's not attacking it as much as we'd like. Uh, I think they're doing a nice job though. Graves attacking the basket. She's got two drives from that high post. Backdoor cut, knocked away by Nard, but put right back up and in in the second basket for Askew for Boise State, wearing number 32 in black. Nard has come on early, number 31 and wide along the baseline for Tennessee to replace Reynolds on the perimeter. Burdick down the lane. Burdick looking inside to Graves, puts it up and in. And then will be available all night. Burdick at that high post is just, she's a tough matchup in that zone. Now 
Askew with it in the post. Little shake. Turn around off the iron, and that falls. And Burdick with a rebound. Here comes Tennessee. Nard running ahead of the pack. Wonderful transition defense by Deanna Weaver. 5'11", senior out of Santa Clara, California, wearing number one in black, the transfer from the University of Oregon. Again, Boise State out of bounds. Every time out of bounds, they're going man to man. When they can get set, they're going 2-3 zone. But both, both defenses are good, effective, and they're very aggressive. And it's, it's been the driving that's been the difference for Tennessee. Every time they've driven, they've scored. Well, Bashara Graves once again off to a wonderful start, and she has had some of her biggest games, as I mentioned, right before we went to break against some of the best competition for Tennessee, had a huge game against Notre Dame. Big game at South Carolina. Rodriguez step back three, not there. Once again, a rebound by Burdick. seed Boise State leading Tennessee in Knoxville 9 to 8 and uh, Boise State showing no sign of nerves they've handled the three-quarter court pressure of Tennessee they've made a couple of three-pointers they've moved the ball well and when you're a 15 going up against a two at Thompson Bowling Arena where Tennessee has never lost an NCAA basketball game they have got to be absolutely thrilled with their start shot clock at seven well, yeah, you have nothing to lose. Nobody thinks you're going to win this game, so just go play. Have fun. That shot off the front of the iron, missed by Shea Shaw. Quickly ahead to Nia Moore, just on the floor now for Tennessee. In for about 15 seconds and scores her first basket. And a quick timeout called by Boise State. Want to remind that the Women's Basketball Championship continues today on ESPN2. Every team is on a mission to take home the title. And a march to glory requires a magical six-game streak. Who'll cut down the nets in Tampa? The NCAA Women's Basketball Championship presented by Capital One today at 4 p.m. on ESPN2 with future Hall of Famer Gail Geston, course, former coach at Duke and the University of Texas. I'm Paul Sunderland. University of Texas uh, after a very, excuse me, the University of Tennessee after a very, very slow start has uh, found some rhythm getting out on the run and, and mentioned, uh, talk about uh, David versus Goliath, 34th appearance, Tennessee the only program to play in each and every women's NCAA championship. Games won, eight championships, 18 final fours. And ironically, if you will, the last time that Tennessee won the national championship, that was over Stanford in the final. That was in Tampa, Florida. Long range jump shot knocked down by Dina Weaver. That was a long two pointer. Dina Weaver, a player to watch, number one in black, has attracted a lot of interest from scouts in the WNBA. Long, very active. And she didn't have a great Mountain West tournament. So this is a great sign early for Boise State. Jordan Reynolds back on along with Alexa Middleton. Middleton on the perimeter. Shot clock down at three. Reynolds has to force that up. But she is really a talented scorer and doesn't mind taking it into traffic. She is, and she doesn't look to score often. But when she does, she's so poised. She's big. She's strong. She's got a nice pull up. That ball rims out early in the clock. And the miss by Deanna Weaver and quickly into the front court to Middleton. Tennessee on top, 12-11. Almost a held ball, shoveled inside. And the Lady Balls had turned it over and complicate matters by committing the personal foul. And we saw Boise State yesterday working on their transition defense. They knew transition could be an issue. That time getting back very well in transition. But they know Tennessee is always looking to push tempo. That's a really great point. Boise State, when they came out to practice during their allotted 90 minutes yesterday, they said spent a good while in transition defense. You cannot give up easy ones to the heavily favored. 
Lady Ball has pulled up jump shot that time by Weaver, and Ball deflected out of bounds, and good hustle along the baseline by Kiana Engel, 5'7", redshirt junior, just on the floor. So a good one early, Boise State and Tennessee. You're watching the Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Earlier game, the Pitt Panthers advanced over University of Tennessee Chattanooga, a 51-40 decision, and they will get the winner of this one. Boise State, the number 15 seed, taking on the sixth-ranked and second-seeded Tennessee Lady Vols in the Spokane Regional. At the top of this bracket, Gonzaga and Oregon State have already advanced. Tennessee was 15-1, and one, tied for first place with South Carolina for the regular season title. South Carolina did take down Tennessee a couple of weeks ago in Little Rock, Arkansas for the postseason tournament title. Boise looking to inbound, and they cannot get the ball in. A five-second call on the violation. It's excellent defense by Tennessee. Coming out of that timeout, that's when you want to score offensively and defensively, you, you're looking to make a stand. Ball is loose and Middleton goes into the scrum and digs that one out. High low once again, ball deflected away. It goes right to Nia Moore, point blank range. That's an easy play to call. Shea Shaw, number two in black, is going to be called for the foul, reaching in after the good offensive rebound by Tennessee. And I'm really loving Burdick's aggressiveness. She's making all of the hustle plays for Tennessee right now. Third team foul on Boise State. Engel will go back to the sideline, along with number three, Tanisha Childress. It's a pretty deep Boise State team. They go 12 deep in their lineup. Again, balls on the floor. Nard is going to be tied up, and on the possession arrow, it'll be Boise State's basketball. Boise State to inbound. 11:24 remaining in the opening half. Boise State got out to a 7-2 lead, made a couple of three-pointers, ran their offense very effectively, took Tennessee a bit to feel comfortable against this zone defense applied by Boise. And also, Boise has not had any trouble whatsoever with this three-quarter court, half-court pressure. No, and Coach Presnell was very worried about the physicality of the game, the pressure of the game, the switching 
defenses of Tennessee, and they've handled it really well. Back on the floor is Camille Redman in spite of the early two personal fouls. So Gordy Presnell, the head coach for Boise State, realizing he had to get basically his only real size back on the floor. She stands six foot four. Tennessee switching almost every ball screen and on the alternating arrow. On the held ball, now it will be Tennessee's basketball. The Lady Vols leading 12 to 11. And that was a concern we talked about with Coach Presnell. He said, you know, they just have so much size, Tennessee does. And his little point guard, Jai Rodriguez, excellent point guard, but she's only 5'5". It's hard for her to see over the size of Tennessee. Checking a possible timing error at the scorer's table. Amy Bonner, Tiffany Bird, and Charlie Hust are the officials for this one. 2-3 zone. Well, this is an active switching zone defense. Very good play along the baseline by Shea Shaw. Shot clock at five. Massengale through the lane. Teardrop off the back of the iron. Offensive rebound by Nard. Misses that one off the side of the backboard. Throws it back on the floor. And Palacola will have it for Boise State. And that's where Nard needs to make that basket. She knows Redmond can't foul. Three-pointer on the way off the side of the iron. Offensive rebound and put back up and in by Brooke Palacola. When we watched them practice yesterday, we're so impressed by this sophomore. Just a lot of poise to her game. Twin sister is a teammate, wears number 40, Brittany. Reynolds looking down inside. Graves there once again trying to carve out some space, and she was fouled from behind and will get to the free throw line. And well, Graves finds her way to the charity stripe. Want to remind you, the NCAA Wrestling Championships conclude tonight in St. Louis. Catch the final at 8 Eastern on ESPN. And watch ESPN and, and the special off-the-mat coverage on ESPN3. Visit NCAA.com, the home for all 89. NCAA championships. We've covered a lot of games, Gail, in the Southeastern Conference throughout the course of the year. And just your general thoughts on Tennessee. You look at their record, 27-5. and five. They lost to South Carolina twice. They lost to Notre Dame. They lost to Chattanooga early in the season. They have had not just one injury, but a couple. Your thoughts on how far they can go? Well, I think they can go to, the, I know they can go to the Final Four, but it's going to take them playing team basketball at the most elite level, and that means great focus. They lose their focus periodically from game to game and within games. And they're going to have to hit, Massengill's going to have to be a scorer for them. She's going to have to get out of her shooting slump for them to be successful and go as far as they want to go. Great point. Now just four of her last 26, including three very unproductive games at the SEC tournament a couple of weeks ago. And prior to that, she was shooting the ball very well. Holly Warlick, again in her third season. Very frustrated, uh, that little holding foul called along the baseline. That is just the second team foul on Tennessee. Four team fouls on Boise State. Well, there could have been another foul right there. You've got to play smart. You want to stay aggressive, but you've got to play smart. Boise State, once again, a prolific three-point shooting team. They average 8.2 three-point makes per game, and a full 37% of all of their field goal attempts are from outside the arc. So clearly a focus for Tennessee and maybe forcing them to extend their defense. Once again, Boise State having some trouble getting the ball in bounds, and that's a careless turnover. Well, and Holly Warlick talk, talked about what some of her keys to the game were, and she said we want to make them take twos, not threes, because she knows not only are they an excellent three-point shooting team, but that's where they get their energy from when they hit those threes. So far, Boise State just one of five from outside the arc. Messingale on the way and good. She must have heard us. She knows she's needed. Ariel Massengale, overall an expert three-point shooter at 38%, but just has, there's just been a lid on the basket the last couple of games. Well, real nice job. They run a little screen for her on the baseline, gets her feet set, beautiful shot. 
I couldn't agree with you more. If Tennessee is going to advance yet to another Final Four and pursue their ninth national championship, not only Massengale, but Carter, along with Jordan Reynolds, they have got to hit perimeter shots. A holding foul on the perimeter once again. That will be called against Bashar Graves. That is her first personal foul and the third team foul for Tennessee. Tennessee on top now with 8.40 remaining, 17-13. Oh, dangerous pass, and Graves on the steal. Got to watch out for the charge. Nice little drop off, and give the assist to Graves, and back-to-back -back baskets for Massengale of Tennessee. Pressure starting to take a toll on Boise State. Wide open in the corner. Three-pointer. That will settle things down. Rook Palapoa with yet another three-pointer. And that's the risk you run when you run traps and presses. You either get a steal or somebody's going to be wide open for a three. Powell in double figures, perfect four for four, two for two from outside the arc. Graves, offensive rebound, and back up and in. Graves is a beast down on that low block right now. That just happens to be her nickname given to her by her teammates. <laughs> the Beast. Powell pull up jump shot, counts if it goes, and it does. Brooke Pawakoa on fire for Boise State and keeping him in here against the second seeded Lady Vols of Tennessee already with a dozen. Boise State trailing by only three. Thank you, Kevin Merrill in the number one seed in the Spokane region, followed by the Tennessee Lady Vols, Oregon State, playing their first weekend at Guild Coliseum up in Corvallis. And the Duke Blue Devils, uh, they are the number four seed in the Spokane regional. Duke barely survived yesterday. What a nail biter they had against Alden. Free throw up and good now for Powell Cole, leading all scores with 13. Tennessee's trying to set ball screens on that zone. And Massengale, again, she loves that baseline, doing a nice job. 
Massingale, three for three from the floor, included within that a couple of triples, already with eight. Weaver, wide open off the back of the iron. Good rebound by Nard, who snatches it away that time from Askew. Middleton along the baseline. Very nice little drop pass, but Jamie Nard has got to finish. That was a beautiful assist and misses another layup. That's three missed layups for her. You got to get your focus back. It's tournament time. And hung her head just a little bit. She better get back defensively. And again, you see Tennessee switching these ball screens. Three-pointer on the way, and good once again, deep out of the corner. Kayla Reinhardt well, with her first triple. Yeah, Nard might have to come out because she had her hands down. This is a great three-point shooting team. No excuse for that. You gotta let it go. Massingale, high, low, and Nard will finish that one. And a sigh of relief. And she just bought herself another minute or two on the floor. <laughs> you would have had her out a long time ago. Had you had a quick tough. trigger. Get her out of there, says Gail Guestin, of course. Reinhardt again off the front of the iron, goes after her own rebound, and Graves takes it off the floor. Looking ahead, Andrea Carter ahead of the pack lays it up and in. Long shots, you got to expect long rebounds and runouts. And to your point, made very well earlier on. Boise State, I'll tell you, they got to be solid with the ball, and they can't give up layups. Nice pass down inside from Rodriguez to ask you. If you want a chance against Tennessee, particularly in this building, you better make them shoot over the top. Massingale feeling it off the front of the iron. That ball is off of Carter and taken by Reinhardt. 5-10 remaining in the opening half. Boise State got out to a 7-2 lead. Tennessee settled thing down, things down against the zone, and now it's been back and forth. Tennessee leading by four. Inside, not there. Carter knocked to the floor. No foul is called. And it'll be ball out of bounds to Tennessee. Third round action of the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Championship continues today on CBS, TBS, and TNT. For more information on tournament game times and listings, go to NCAA.com. Tennessee at 27 and 5 overall. Sixth ranked team in the nation, 15 and 1 in conference. Tied South Carolina again for the regular season title. Boise State came in at 22 and 10, 11 and 7 in conference. They were the fourth seed going into their postseason. And they beat New Mexico 66 to 60 in the finals. And they have won five out of their last six. Yeah, they just started hitting their stride late, which is when you want to hit it. They're peaking at the right time. Mia Moore, turnaround jump shot off the backboard, and a foul is going to be called on Tennessee. That's the first personal foul on Nard. So now five team fouls on Tennessee, four on Boise State. Boise State, they love to set ball screens. And they knew coming into this game, Tennessee loves to switch ball screens. Good look down inside. Not there that time by Kinsey Poteet. Wearing number 33 in black. And quickly into the front court is Massingale. Inside to Moore, right at the rim. Really good entry pass. Yeah. Excellent pass, excellent finish. And I feel like as this game goes on, Tennessee, they're finally, they're starting to find their rhythm. Well, they find Massingale, who spread the zone a little bit, and now in spite of some nard misses, you see that there's space to operate. Palakoa feeling it. Isn't she indeed? That was a three-pointer. We'll have to double-check that one. Maybe the officials will go to the table. That was very close to the line. But Palakoa now with 16 first-half points. Carter, her first look out of the corner, no. Good block out, and the foul is going to be on Moore going over the top. We will step aside. Tennessee on top of Boise State, 30 to 27 here in Knoxville.
Tennessee leading Boise State, number two seed versus the number 15. Be sure and check out the latest photos that teams and players are sharing during the NCAA Women's Championship at ESPNW.com slash tourney photos. And Isabel Harrison tweeting out, bet you thought I couldn't do this on just one leg. Of course, undergoing ACL reconstructive surgery after being injured on February 15th. I hope, her coach does, I hope her coach doesn't see that. <laughs> You've already got one ACL and you are dancing on one leg. Isabel Harrison projected to be the number one overall pick in the WNBA coming up in the next draft. Obviously that injury because she will be out for the next season will really affect her draft status. It will. I think she'll probably still go very high, um, but probably to a team that doesn't need immediate help. She was ranked among the leaders in the SEC in scoring, rebounding, block shots, and field goal percentage before that injury. Three-pointer on the way and good once again. Shea Shaw, 37 percenter from outside the arc. And look, Boise State, a prolific three-point shooting team. That's what we've seen in the first half, particularly from Powell Cole. Well, in Tennessee, they've got their hands down. You know, you want to force them to put it on the deck. Your teammates cannot help you with a three-point shot. They can help you on penetration. Mass and Gale float her along the baseline. Beautifully made. She is really a talent now in her senior year. Part of the last class recruited by Pat Summit. Sierra Burdick, Isabel Harrison, and Ariel Massengale. Again, the legend Coach Summit sitting courtside. Rodriguez trying to free herself against the size of Tennessee and turns it over. Here comes Reynolds. Crossover dribble all the way to the rim and drew some contact. Maybe a little out of control, but she'll get to the free throw line. And I like that Tennessee is attacking in transition. Put the pressure on the Boise State defense. Third personal foul called against outstanding freshman Shea Shaw out of Reno, Nevada, who just made that three. Again, this is a very deep Boise State team. They go 12 regularly in their rotation, but Shea Shaw, really good up and coming talent. The first free throw is up and good. And I think that might have been her third foul. It was, it was, indeed. That's a, that's a tough loss. Camille Redmond got in very early foul trouble. Picked up two personal fouls in the first three minutes of this half. The 6-4 starting center for Boise State to transfer out of Purdue. Both free throws up and good. Tennessee on top, 34-30. Palacoa in trouble along the sideline and has the ball stolen away. And then Rodriguez may be a smart foul because Jordan Reynolds was running clear. And so Rodriguez just wrapped up the Lady Vols. And that's a, it was a great trap. Nice job, Andrea Carter. Tremendous defensive player. 
That's the 16 foul on Boise State joining Tennessee so it'll be free throws the rest of the way. That's really the first possession where Boise State has really been troubled by that three quarter half court trap dangerous ill advised pass Rodriguez running ahead of the pack. Kawakoa again along the sideline and threw it out of bounds. So Brooke Palakoa has been the star for Boise State in the first half. A perfect six for six from the floor, three for three from outside the arc. She has 16 of their 30 points, but turnovers back to back possessions. Yeah, she needs to catch to shoot, not to dribble. That's a great point. Graves down the lane, little shovel pass into traffic, and on the possession arrow. It is going to be Boise State's basketball. Be sure to stay with us at the break here in Knoxville. Coming up next, the Northwestern Mutual Halftime Report with Kevin Kara and Rebecca. Look at all of the scores from around day two in the women's tournament. Boise State has done an outstanding job. They are making threes. They're taking open threes. They've limited their turnovers. And they're doing it with some of their best players sitting on the sideline right now in foul trouble. Rodriguez directing traffic, looking for the high lob on the mismatch. They had Askew at six foot three being guarded by the five foot nine Carter, but the pass just a little bit too tall. And that's because she had Graves on her with that switch. It's hard to pass over Bashara Graves to a post player. Reynolds down the lane, good ball movement. Carter for three, carries it. And I think that was, yeah, that was their best offensive set because they got pit dribble penetration, inside out, skip pass, wide open three. Biggest lead so far of the game for Tennessee. Shot clock and game clock separated by about six and a half seconds. There's the switch once again. Can Rodriguez get down inside? Nowhere to go. Powakoa, the floater, and she's still perfect. Powakoa now with 18 first half points. Time for Tennessee. Might have been a travel on that. Reynolds pull up, jump shot, and she answers. And that will bring the first half to a close. The Lady Volunteers with a late first half run go out to a 39-32 lead. Now let's send it back to the studio for the Northwestern Mutual Halftime Report. That is true.
Welcome once again to the Women's Championships presented by Capital One. Both teams back out on the floor here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Very interesting first half. Boise State, a number 15 seed, given Tennessee all they want and more with future Hall of Famer Gail Guest, of course, on Paul Sunderland. And when Boise State has given you everything they've got, that means from the three-point three line. And Brooke Palakoa has been absolutely unconscious so far in the first half. She really has. Five for ten as a team from the three-point line. She has not missed a shot. Just a sophomore, but playing with so much poise and confidence. And I'll tell you, Tennessee must have been talking about number 44 in black at the half. How in the world is she getting so many wide open looks but taking full advantage? 18 out of her team's 32 points, Graves and Massingale. How did they finally find some space against that 2-3 zone of Boise State? Well, for Graves, it was a lot of the high-low, and she was the low recipient. She also did a nice job on the offensive glass. And then Ariel Massengale running that baseline had some good looks from that three-point line. She's knocking them down today. Both teams shot it exceptionally well. Boise State, an even 15%, 13 of 26 overall. They made half of their 10 three-point attempts. And Tennessee, not much behind, 48.5%. And they were three of six from three-point range. Boise State only got to the line once, and Tennessee was four of six from the free throw line. And Boise State did get out, rebounded significantly, something that they'll have to clean up 20 to 11 by Tennessee. And we are underway here in the second half. And as a reminder, this is the 55th NCAA tournament game played on this floor by the Lady Vols. They are a perfect 54-0. In first possession, they come out in man-to-man. -man. We saw zone mostly in the first half, so trying to change things up defensively. And trying to get Sierra Burdick, who's been the leading scorer for Tennessee since Isabel Harrison went out in the middle of February. She was just 0-for-1 in the first half. Set play, and she couldn't knock it down. Double team against Rodriguez. Ball deflected away that time by Graves, looking down inside for Nikhil Askew, 6'3", junior, out of South Jordan, Utah, wearing number 32 in black. And they run the same play that they ran to start the game with. She scored in the first half on that play. Sierra Burdick was ready for it that time. Rodriguez really having a tough time throwing over the top, but Camille Redman, who was hampered by foul trouble the entire first half, scores her first basket. And we talked about Redmond being a non-factor in the first half. Only played five minutes because of foul trouble. They need her in there because of her rebounding, her size, her athleticism. 6'4", senior transfer out of Purdue. Played in the NCAA tournament last year. Reynolds down the lane, no. Ball deflected out nicely by Graves. And Tennessee will have a fresh clock. Oh, Graves inside. Up and that just rolls off the iron. And Camille Redmond just picked up her third personal foul. And she started the game the same way, getting in early foul trouble. Not a good sign for Boise State. Well, Camille Redmond, it was a, a beautiful bit of footwork by Bashar Graves, a little jab step that Jerry Sloan told me something a long time ago that I've never forgotten about ball fakes. Don't shoot at the decoys. <laughs> <laughs> that, one, that one just always kind of stuck with me for good reason. If you know Jerry Sloan, you can see where that was coming from. Graves a very nice stroke. Missed the first, made the second. Just underway here in the second half. Thanks so much for joining us here in Knoxville. Tennessee picking up in their little half-court trap. Trying to get some quick steals again. Much better closeout. Well, Powell Cole, we talked about it during the halftime. And we said that if Brooke Palakoa, who had 18 first half points, get, gets five open looks in the second half, shame on Tennessee. And Bashar Graves was paying very close attention. Redmond just picked up her fourth personal foul now and has to head to the sideline. Wow, that's, that's really, really damaging to the hopes of Boise State of staying in this game. And like you said, as a senior, you've got to know when to back off. Your team needs you on the floor. Lob pass inside to Graves, up through traffic, lays in a van. And that's what happens as soon as Redmond goes out. They go inside, Tennessee goes inside and attacks. Tennessee quickly to their largest lead of the game at 8, 42 to 34. 
Inside to Shaw, stolen away. Reynolds running ahead of the pack. And the lead is going to grow even more. And maybe Boise State, yep. Boise State needed an early timeout. So Tennessee finally starting to pull away right here at the start of the first half. Now leading by 10 over Boise State. The one and only Pat Summit won eight national championships here with Tennessee, surpassed only by the 10 titles won by UCLA's John Wooden and UConn's Gina Oriyama. She also holds the record for most all time wins for a coach in NCAA basketball history, either men's or women's in any division with 1,098 wins and is a seven time NCAA coach of the year. Massengale down the lane. Pat Summit probably impacted the game of women's basketball in its developmental stage, if you will, more than anybody else. Her impact, like Coach Wooden's, will be felt forever on the game of women's college basketball. And she impacted in so many ways, not just her own players, but so many coaches along the way. She was a mentor to many, including myself. I mean, we just learned so much from her about how to run a program in the right way with class and integrity. Massengale good on both free throws. So Tennessee doing some early second half damage from the line. Bashara Graves was one of two. And now the lead grows to a dozen. Off the dribble, pull up jumper, and offensive rebound. Boy, did Boise State need that from Shea Shaw on the putback. Just a nice job staying aggressive, taking advantage. Again, another ball screen switch, and that time they took advantage of it. Massengale looking for yet another three. And Greg Carter high into the afternoon to grab the rebound. Fresh clock for Tennessee. Tennessee comes in at 27 and 5. Boise State at 22 and 10. Good look down inside, and the beast Bashar Graves carving out space, doing her work early. And every time Sierra Burdick has been at that high post area, she has made great things happen. Such a good passer from up there. Graves now with 17, seven of eight shooting, also three of four from the free throw line. And Shea Shaw just picked up her fourth personal foul. <laughs> 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 
Three point play completed 16 52 remaining in this one and the lead now once again is the largest at 13 49 to 36. And the best defender Andrea Carter wearing number 14 in white good look down inside and it's Shaw once again but Carter being matched up right now on Powakoa trying to deny some perimeter looks Powakoa 18 first half points for Boise State. The dive once again, good kick to the perimeter. Burdick a little bit too unselfish. And that's where she's got to take that shot. You love that she's being unselfish, but there comes a time they had great ball movement inside out, ball reversal, take the shot. Sierra Burdick, one of uh, three members on this team of Pat Subbett's final recruiting class, might have seen that cast on the right wrist of Holly Warlick, slipped and fell when some real wintry weather moved into the southeast here. Broke her wrist before she got attended to, went on to win a game over at Georgia. Palakoa down the lane, has to readjust, and her first make of the second half now with 20. has got it deep against Askew. Burdick flies in for the offensive rebound. And an offensive foul is going to be called. We'll come back. Boise State trying to get back in this one, trailing by nine. UConn's Brianna Stewart and Kalina Mosqueda Lewis are two of our three to see players this season. For more on our three to see players, be sure and log on to ESPNW.com. And speaking of Brianna Stewart and Kalina Mosqueda Lewis, the number one overall seed, the Huskies from UConn, begin their drive for a third straight championship tonight against the Terriers. It's the beginning of their march towards history as Gino Ariyama looks to match John Wooden for a tenth. NCAA title, the NCAA Women's Championship. St. Francis, Brooklyn battles UConn tonight at 9 on ESPN2. UConn clearly the, the class of this field. Their only loss all season long. Seems like a lifetime ago up at Stanford at Maples Pavilion. Rodriguez, number 10 in black, the fine point guard, has had a really difficult time against the size and length. That ball tipped away by Andrea Carter, but a personal foul is called. 
How can Rodriguez at only five foot seven have some impact on this game in the half court against a team like Tennessee? Yeah, well, she's got six assists, so she's done some nice things, but she also has five turnovers. She needs to go north south because anytime she goes east west, she's quicker than some of the Tennessee players, especially right now she's got Burdick on her. She's got the speed. Burdick's got the size, so she needs to go by her, see some light, and then make the assist and find her teammate. Weaver step back jumper and buries a three pointer. So the lead was 13 at 49 to 36, and now a 7 0 run for Boise State to get back in it. And Boise State shooting over 51% for the game, so they've got to feel good about things. Step back jumper off the iron. Palacoa takes the rebound, loses the handle, but fortunately for Boise State, it goes to Jai Rodriguez. Good cut by Shaw. Shot might have been blocked from behind by Burdick, and here comes Massengale quickly. She's going all the way, lays it up, and draws the foul on Deanna Weaver. So two free throws come into Tennessee. More NCAA championship action coming your way. The road to the Frozen Four ice is up tomorrow with the NCAA Hockey Championship Selection Show at noon Eastern on ESPNU and watch ESPN. Visit NCAA.com, the home for all 89 NCAA championships. Again, if you've been following Tennessee, Ariel Massengale really struggled at the recent SEC tournament. She was 0 for 6 against South Carolina in the finals, 4 for 25 overall. And look at the difference today. And it started early, made a couple of threes, had a floater right at the end of the first half, and she looks to be right back in a very comfortable rhythm at the offensive end. And that's what happens sometimes when you get the break after your tournament, conference tournaments. You get some time off, reassess, get some rest, and then get back to it. Work on your weaknesses. Looking inside for Askew and good post defense that time by Graves. Still 13 to shoot. Boy, a long three-pointer on the way, off the side of the iron. Flying in for the rebound, Jamie Nard, just on the floor for Tennessee, has it number 31 in white. Nard, not picked up, dribbling baseline, knocked to the floor, no foul call. Oh, Powell Cole is wide open on the wing. Rodriguez again for three, off the back of the iron. Good rebound by Massingale. Graves running ahead of the pack. Can't quite track that one down, but it'll be off of Palakoa. And Tennessee's basketball, 13-29 remaining. Both teams have gotten a little sloppy here. They've got to regain their focus. Tennessee does not want to let Boise State hang around. Well, Tennessee dodged one over the last couple of possessions because that's Boise State style. Don't forget, 37% of all their field goal attempts are from outside the arc. So if they get a good look, no, irrespective of the shot clock, they're taking it. Missed a couple of pretty open threes back to back. High low once again, Graves trying to carve out some space. For Shona Graves now with 20. Tipped away by Carter and over the sideline. 13 minutes remaining. Boise State will have 18 seconds to shoot. Bashara Graves, already with 20 points in this opening game of this year's NCAA tournament, had 14 points throughout the tournament last year. That's in three tournament games and getting a much-deserved round of applause as she goes to the sideline. A superb afternoon so far for Bashara Graves. And she needs to take Sierra Burdick out for dinner tonight because Sierra's the one who's <laughs> passing the ball from that high post position. That's a very good point. Askew inside. Did keep her pivot foot. Battle for the rebound, and Massengale's got it. Really pushing the tempo. Burdick, 18 feet straight away, rims in and out. Rebound taken by Poteet, number 33 in black. And that's okay. I, we need her. She needs to take that Absolutely. shot. Absolutely. We're open in transition. She's now a stretch four. Need to take that shot. Keep people honest. Holding foul on the perimeter, as you pointed out, Rodriguez, number 10 in black, the point guard for Boise State, who has represented her native Spain since she was 16 years of age, trying to go north and south instead of east to west. 
Palakoa back on replacing Weaver. Rodriguez, defender went under the screen, wide open from three-point range. And they're letting her have that shot. They ran the same play defensively the last possession. They're going to go under until she hits one. And Nia Moore, whose role has really expanded after the mid-February injury to Isabel Harrison, a very, very talented 6'3 junior out of Chicago, Illinois. Off the front of the iron, but uh, trying to block that shot was Moore and will send Mikkel Askew to the free throw line. Very few free throws shot in the first half of this game, which is always a good sign. We like that just fine, but uh, only one free throw attempted by Boise State and Tennessee was only four of six from the strike. Mikkel Askew averaged nine points, four rebounds out of South Jordan, Utah. Numbers down a little bit, but uh, Boise State has added some new faces, and particularly with Camille Redmond, who unfortunately for Boise State has not been a factor here this afternoon against Tennessee because of constant foul trouble. Both free throws up and good. The Tennessee lead is 10 at 55-45. I think if you've told Gordy Presnell that he'd be only 10 down with his starting post player playing six minutes with foul trouble, He'd be happy. Yeah, no question about that. Tennessee led it 39-32 at the half. Miss again by Burdick, really struggling from the floor. Three-pointer on the way, not close that time by Childress. And the rebound taken by Burdick. Oh, what a look again. That had a little Magic Johnson on it. Jamie Nard continues to struggle finishing. Those are in traffic, but come on. She has had five shots at point blank range and come up empty. Jamie Nard needs to spend the summer in the weight room. She needs to become best friends with the strength training coach here at Tennessee. Inside of 11 minutes. Shaw on the perimeter, spins in traffic and on the block shot. Ruled that Nia Moore came off the block shot to the arm and it'll be free throws coming. You can bet it's NCAA tournament time, and emotions are as high as they get. Tennessee leading by 10. You're going right into that, Gail. Got it. Can 
Tennessee has been working this high-low against this zone all game. You can see here Sierra Burdick, they're going to pass the ball inside. When they do, then you're going to see Bashar Graves dive down to the low block. They're looking for that high-low. It's been successful all game long. There's the high pass, there's the low dive, and fi focus, finish, you gotta love it. They've been working that all night long. Sierra Burdick will be uh, taking care of the dinner reservations, as you pointed out. <laughs> Bashar Graves will be buying the dinner because it has been very unselfish. Burdick on an afternoon where she has struggled to score, she's doing a wonderful job of setting up her teammates. Graves so far on the afternoon, 20 points, three rebounds, eight of 10 shooting, four of five from, th from the free throw line. Outside to Middleton, sets her feet, three-pointer will come up well short. Good job getting after the rebound is Kiana Engel wearing number 21 in black. How does Boise State get uh, Brooke Powakoa some open looks here? She's only got one basket so far in the second half. Well, they need to run some staggers for her. And they have some sets where they'll run staggers along the baseline. We just haven't seen them lately because she's having a tough time getting open on her own. She needs some help. Shaw has that shot rejected down inside. Shot clock winding down. Three-pointer on the way. And as big a story as the three-point accuracy was for Boise State in the first half, it's an equally big story in the second half for Gordy Presnell's Broncos. They are one for seven from three-point range, and they have missed their last five in a row. Got to keep shooting them. That's you who do, they are. You do, but they, they're not open. Tennessee, give Tennessee credit for their defense. They've done a much better job closing out on the shooters. But you need to get some penetration by your guards, draw some help, and then look to skip it for those threes. There's the double post. Nia Moore, instead of diving to the basket, steps back outside. Skip pass out to Middleton once again. Eight to shoot. Couple dribbles, roll up, not there. Good rebound inside by Nard. Well, she is staying with it. She's gotten a lot of shot, op shot opportunities and certainly has been frustrated. Just one of eight from the floor, but now she'll get a couple of free throws. And that's a good sign for Nard. We've seen her hang, hang her head a couple of times. You don't want to see that, but you just got to stay in the play, stay tough, stay physical. Good things will happen if you stay aggressive. 6'2 freshman out of Portland, Oregon. There are three members of this Lady Balls basketball team from the Northwest. Jordan Reynolds from the Portland area and Mercedes Russell, who's sitting out this year because of uh, foot injury and subsequent surgery. A 6'6 sophomore out of Springfield, Oregon, in the shadow of Eugene. And uh, she is uh, really one to be counted on next year with the number one overall recruit when she came to Knoxville to play for the Lady Balls. So free throws good. And now the lead back up to 11. Largest lead was 13. Tennessee at 27 and 5. Boise State 22 and 10. Hand off there to Petit. Loses the handle and here comes Middleton. Tennessee looking to run. Graves high low again into Moore right at the front of the rim. Really nice high low. Great passing from the Tennessee post players from that high post area. Moore now with eight. Tennessee leads it by 13, 58-45. If you weren't with us for the earlier game, it was the Pitt Panthers over University of Tennessee Chattanooga 51-40. The winner of this plays the Pitt Panthers tomorrow. Excuse me, on Monday. Not used to having a day off. <laughs> One of the areas of emphasis is impeding freedom of movement. And you saw the official on the outside signaling the arm bar, a holding violation going against Boise State, and personal foul going up against Engel. And so Bashara Graves will go back to the free throw line where she's only missed once in her five attempts. Player of the game so far, absolutely. And she came out ready to play. And she has been relentless the entire game. Her focus, her energy has been so good. And this is what Tennessee's going to need moving forward. And Massengale's been locked in as well. Those are two key players that need to show up and play well 
for Tennessee to make a deep run. Bashar Graves, an absolute fixture in the starting lineup for Tennessee, making her 95th start to 6'2 junior out of Clarksville, Tennessee. Largest lead now at 60 to 45. Three pointer on the way and good. Shayshaw knocking it down from distance. Oh, Aaron pass, Powell Cole. Cross over dribble, Powell Cole with the fake outside to Rodriguez, and that's going to be a traveling violation on the perimeter. Gordy Presnell can't believe it. And Tennessee now extending out to a 12 point lead, 60 to 48. All right, thank you, Kevin. Tennessee led it by seven at the half, 39 to 32. Boise State was really efficient from three-point range, making half of their 10 shots from long range. Second half, a different story, only two of eight. And Brooke Powell-Cole had 18 first-half points with only two so far here in the second half. Missed by Reynolds and rebound taken by Poteet. Palacoa looking at the three off the mark, and that'll go down as a team rebound. But that was a really nice set. They ran for her coming out of this timeout. They set a double screen for her to come high. Got a good look at it. It's her first good look, really, of the second half. They've gone to man-to-man -man now. Tennessee was picking apart their zone. You had no answer for Bashar Graves, and I'm not sure they do either man-to-man -man or zone. Graves currently on the sideline. Burdick has that ball deflected, and an offensive foul is going to be called against number 11 in white, Sierra Burdick. Be sure to stay connected to this year's tournament with ESPNW. Visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash ESPNW, and stay in the moment with our Twitter accounts at ESPNW and ESPN underscore women hoops back with Gail Guest of course former head coach at Duke four times to the final four it has been a long season and a lot of the pressure the real pressure still to come as you well know particularly for a program like Tennessee 
excellent block on the inside, just doing a really nice job. Always makes you feel better as a guard when you know you've got a big back there <laughs> to save your butt <laughs> when you get beat. Yeah, I was, I was really good at the blow by. <laughs> I was always glad to have a teammate back there who might be able to block a few shots. 6.52 remaining. Redman struggling with it here, thrown on the floor. And Boise State will have it. Looking inside for Redman. Turning on Burdick and gets that shot to fall. And they have been missing that all game long. Sideline with those fouls. It's been a long night for her, only six minutes for Redmond. Well, Camille Redmond was her own worst enemy, and as a fifth-year senior, we talked about it. You just cannot do that. She picked up two fouls in the first three minutes and then picked up her third very early in the second half. And you can see she's an inside presence for Boise State. Shot clock at five. Massengale steps back. Nard after the rebound, her 11th, but throws it on the floor to Rodriguez of Boise State. The lead is only 10. See if Boise State can get Powakoa another good look. Weaver buries a three-pointer. The 5'11 senior out of Northern California starting to find the range here in the second half. And she's saying, what about me? I'll take the shot. They're leading scorer, but she's been quiet. Weaver now with eight, three of eight. And Jamie Nard with the make, and not much of a smile there. It has been a tough afternoon for the freshman out of the Northwest. Bashar Graves back on. Jamie Nard will go to the free throw line looking to complete the three-point play. In Jamie Nard, I think we're going to see a completely different player when we see her next year. She's so skilled. She can play inside and out. Good shooter, passer. But that freshman year, it's so physical at this level. Shea Shaw going to the sideline. The 6'1 freshman out of Reno, Nevada has fouled out. Ten points, six rebounds. Really solid performance. Nard, an 83% free throw shooter. And Tennessee with 535 remaining. Leads it 63 to 53, and we got a timeout here in Knoxville. And while we've got this time out, let's take a look at today's Capital One Cup impact performance. You know, not an easy answer in the first half, but after the second half that Bashara Graves has had, no doubt about it that she is the Capital One Cup impact performance so far on the afternoon here at home. She was big, strong, physical, and focused. And that is a tough combination. It's been an interesting year for Bashara Graves. I mean, there, there were games, as we talked about, where she would get lots of offensive opportunities. And I'm not talking about going and getting her own on the offensive glass, but would find her way in the offense. Had a big game at Notre Dame, albeit in the loss. A big game at South Carolina. But in this NCAA tournament, she needs to play like this every time out, irrespective of the opponent. And she's capable. Weaver to inbound for Boise State, 535 remaining. Again, Tennessee, a perfect 54-0 in NCAA tournament games on their home floor. And you just feel like Tennessee has not been able to just deliver that knockout punch. Boise State has done a nice job just staying close enough. Every time you think they're going to blow it out, they come back and hit a big three or make a big play defensively. Rodriguez again having trouble dealing with that length. Here comes Burdick, two on one. And that's going to be an offensive foul. Sierra Burdick is really a solid basketball player, but that was a very, very poor decision. Yeah, I think Sierra, in her mind, I think she was thinking she was going to go behind the back. I agree. And at the last minute, she changed her mind. She just needed to make the easy pass. This time, it's time to put this team away. So you need to make the easy pass, make the easy shot. Burdick goes to the sideline with her fourth personal foul. Weaver pull up jumper. I'm not sure she saw the rim. That was very good defense by Bashar Graves on the switch. Inside of five minutes. And Holly Warlick said, run the dive. And there it is. 
Bashar Graves on the dive and the foul away from the play at the defensive end. That time called on Engel and it'll be free throws coming. And all game long, that has been the area that Boise State just hasn't been able to solve that high low pass from the zone. Tennessee now in the double bonus, two free throws the rest of the way. The scoreboard, they've got it. Well, they've got it now at nine, so excuse me. That was one and one, and Graves missed the front half. They had 10 up on the scoreboard momentarily. Palakoa stepped back, had the double clutch in just her second basket of the second half, now with 22. In both baskets in the second half, she's had to create for herself. Ball deflected away off the turnover. And look at this, Boise State has a chance to significantly cut into this eight-point advantage. Little drop pass, I'm not sure who that was intended for. On the floor, possession arrow will stay with Boise State. No, Engel probably needed to just take that three. She's a three-point shooter. That's what she's in there to do. Shot clock is reset. Huge possession in this game. Weaver on the dribble drive to the rim and will get to the free throw line. And that's one of the few times we've seen Weaver take the ball to the basket. She's been settling for those outside shots. She sees she's got the speed advantage. She goes right to the basket on Graves, does a nice job absorbing contact. Get to the free throw line, stop the clock. Mia Moore picks up her fourth personal foul, and foul trouble could be an issue. Burdick has four, Moore has four. Bashar Graves not in any kind of foul trouble as the first of two free throws is up and good. Deanna Weaver. 69% free throw shooter, and again, as more goes to the sideline. Attracting some interest from WNBA scouts. She's gonna make a living as a basketball player. Two free throws, perfect. Didn't look this way about 15 minutes ago when Tennessee led by 16, but now this has become a very important possession. little drop pass to Nard, lost the handle, but it will be Tennessee's basketball when we come back. And Boise State, they will just not go away here in Knoxville.
The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Quicksilver from Capital One. Earn unlimited 1.5% cash back every purchase, every day. Hall of Famer, head coach, now retired Pat Summit, as we remind you of the bottom half of the Spokane, Spokane region bracket. Gonzaga, a very, very good team, pulled away from George Washington, Oregon State, speaking of that, pulled away in the second half. And earlier, it was the Pitt Panthers over Chattanooga and Tennessee and Boise State. And a good one here with 3.36 remaining, Tennessee leading, only 63 to 57. Shot clock winding down, Massengale off the front of the iron, ball deflected out of bounds, and it's going to be Tennessee's basketball once again. Pretty good defense by Boise State, but they were unable to close out the defensive possession with a rebound. Graves to bring it in and does so to Jamie Nard. Massengale for three, off the back of the iron, long rebound again. So this is now the third opportunity Tennessee has to score. It's tough to give a team that's as good as Tennessee on their home court three chances at the basket. Huge possession in this game. Rodriguez, and that shot blocked away. So Palacoa quickly out of the backcourt. Jai Rodriguez, Weaver's already made a couple of throws. Oh, rimmed out. And who's that foul going to be called on? That's going to be called against Bashara Graves. So it'll be one and one now for Boise State. And as you might imagine, the crowd here doesn't like it. Yeah, and they're getting a little uncomfortable. Just the second personal foul, as I thought, on Graves. Sierra Burdick is back on. She's been in foul trouble. She has four. Nia Moore has four personal fouls. And these are big free throws. Redmond just a 63 percenter and rattles that one home. That off the back of the iron, but still it's a five point game inside of two minutes and 50 seconds remaining. And now the verdicts back in look for Tennessee to go back to that high low. Double team on Reynolds. There's the high low. This time it's Burdick wide open. Massingale. Three. three. Oh. Oh, really good play design and unselfish basketball. And paying it off was Ariel Massingale. Down the lane. That shot not there. Massingale with a rebound. Into the corner. Carter thought better of it. Good decision. And you see the difference, the contrasting styles of Massengale and Carter. Carter wants to always, she's going to play with poise. Massengale wants to push and attack. Really good decision by Carter. Carter on the penetration. Difficult chance. Rebound taken by who else? Bashar. The beast. What a game. Bashar Graves with a career high 24 points. And remember last year when Tennessee made it to the Sweet 16, she only scored 14 points in the entire length of the tournament. And you can see what's happened. Once again, Tennessee looks for that high low, pass the ball in, dive. But in this instance, what happens? Go ahead and run it because they're worried about that dive, the wide open three. Great job by Tennessee, great recognition. Ariel Massengale, three of nine from three-point range so far on the afternoon with 17 points, but the story has been Bashar Graves. 24 points, nine of 11 shooting, six of eight from the free throw line. Those two have combined for 41 of Tennessee's 68 points. And after that flurry, Boise State has really got to hurry. Look for an early three. Weaver thought about it to Rodriguez. That came up well short. And the rebound taken by Massingale. Inside of a minute and a half remaining. Tennessee got lucky on that defensive possession. They got lost on the switch. Defense, 
Time and score, the friend of the Lady Vols. Burdick down inside, outside to Carter. Third three. Couple of big makes, first by Massengale and then by Carter. And a nice job by Burdick. She hasn't hit a shot all night, but she finds somebody who can. Weaver working one on one, trying to create a shot. Good defense that time by Reynolds. Tennessee really had to work here this afternoon to make it 55 in a row. Deanna Weaver steps back and buries a three. Timeout taken by Boise State. So time and score obviously in the column of Tennessee, leading 71 to 61 with only 37 and a half seconds left. But Boise State really, really played a solid basketball game. And Tennessee struggled at times in the zone, but you look at Bashara Graves and on the perimeter, Ariel Massingale ended her shooting slump. Solid performance, particularly on an afternoon when Jamie Nard really struggled along with uh, Sierra Burdick, wasn't getting it done offensively. Burdick is 0 for 4 on the afternoon. Want to remind everybody once again that in the 2008 Women's National Championship game, Candace Parker scored 17 points and grabbed nine rebounds to help top seed Tennessee capture its eighth NCAA women's basketball title. A 64 to 48 victory over two seed Stanford. That was their last NCAA championship and that took place in Tampa, Florida. Tampa. Tampa. A lot of work to be done. The foul taken quickly by Boise State, and Massingale will go to the free throw line. Your, your thoughts on Tennessee's performance this afternoon and their potential, or their matchup, I should say, with the Pitt Panthers on Monday? Well, I thought they looked a little bit rusty early. I thought they really came together. Bashar Graves set the tone. Ariel Massingale set the tone. I thought in the second half their offense was good, especially we saw the high-low, but really I thought they did a much better job defensively defending that three-point shot, closing out. Jordan Reynolds in particular, I was impressed with her defense, and uh, Andrea Carter. Those two, I think, came to play defensively and really set the tone. And Pitt was superb earlier today, if you didn't see that game here from Knoxville, holding University of Tennessee Chattanooga to a season low 40 points. So a lot of game planning going on in the next 24 hours. Powakoa, who has been absolutely superb for Boise State, missed that off the side of the iron. Well, I think that's going to be a fun game to watch with Tennessee and Pittsburgh. Both teams like to get up and down the floor. And I just I love watching Kiesel, that point guard in the open court is very, very dangerous. Fun to watch. The pressure of the NCAA tournament, Holly Warlick in her third season, second all-time in assists during her career here in Knoxville, one of just a handful of spectacular players to have her jersey retired up in the rafters with the likes of Candace Parker, Tamika Ch Ketchings, and Shamiqua Holsclaw. After 38 seasons, Pat Summit had to step aside. It is Holly Warlick's 30th year here in Knoxville. The officials uh, are checking to see how much time exactly should be remaining in this basketball game. One of the officials on the outside signaled that the shot clock needed to be reset. All well and fine, except that there's only 22.8 <laughs> 22 seconds remaining. There's no need for the shot clock. One of the big stories, Camille Redmond getting an early foul trouble, number 24 in black, the senior transfer out of Purdue. Unfortunate. She's going to close out her collegiate career. She could have really helped them. Showed some flashes when she was able to stay on the floor. But again, it was a story of Bashara Graves with 24 points on 9 of 11 shooting. Ariel Massingale, 18 points. And also Tennessee doing a pretty good job of getting to the free throw line. Got there 21 times, making 15. And Boise State, on the other hand, just 6 of 7 from the free throw line. And second half, after going 5 of 10 from three-point range in the first half, Boise State was only 4 of 14. Better defense, and also you had to imagine that Boise State was going to cool off a little bit. But Gordy Presnell has to be very impressed. Absolutely. With his Bronco team, they did a tremendous job, especially considering Redmond was out so much of that first half, well, and much of the second half as well with foul trouble. Again, th th this is taking an inordinate amount of time, but you, if you want to get it right, here's another look. This shot did glance off the iron. 
And the ball is out of bounds off of Tennessee with 23.4 seconds remaining. So they will reset it at 22.8. Well, that's where it was. So there was no reset. Interesting, Gordy Presnell, like all college coaches around the country this time of year, pretty exhausted. He said, when I get home, first of all, I'm going to watch Westerns all day long, and then the next day I'm going to tune into the Disney Channel and then just call it, call it an afternoon. That'll do it. But I'll tell you, his team showed some true grit Boy, here they, tonight. Oh, great. They'll oh, be watching oh, John Wayne. You'll give, see true grit, right? Give me, give me some on that. <laughs> and from the right part of the country as well. Boise, an absolutely lovely city. Solid performance by Holly Warlick. And